wasn't only men who were wise in olden times. Several people have asked me this question in recent weeks because in all of these little videos that I've done there's only been one woman to date. Well that may reflect my own bias but it's also true that women faced many handicaps in being recognised and remembered within the tradition of the church. Through prejudice and patriarchy it was difficult to get their voices heard. But I want you to come back with me now to around the year 1200 and I want to introduce you to a very interesting and surprising woman known as Christina the Astonishing. Now Christina didn't write anything of which we know. She only spent three years at the end of her life after 70 in a monastery. And yet she had quite a significant impact in her own time as well as in our own. In recent years a film has been made about her. Nick Cave has written a song about her. There's also been a strange and wonderful story written about her in the New York Times back in 2017 by the writer Kirsten Valdez Quaid. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She was born into a religious family and was the youngest of three sisters. In her early 20s she became ill and suffered a very, very big seizure. She was catatonic. It was thought that she had died. They laid her in a coffin, put the lid on, carried her into church ready for a funeral. But the sound of the Agnes Dei, the song about the Lamb of God, she suddenly woke up, threw off the lid of the coffin, sat up and then levitated up into the top of the roof of the church. This, as you can imagine, was an astonishing thing. Most of the worshippers ran screaming out of the church. The priest and her very devout sister, they stayed there until the mass had finished and then they are said to have run screaming from the church. And eventually they got St. Christina down out of the, uh, the rafters of this church building and then started her bizarre and amazing life of holiness. She could not stand the smell of sin on human beings. And so she spent her life fleeing away from people, roaming through the forests like this, living in rags or naked, fleeing from any people she met because she could smell the sin on them, living in extreme asceticism. She was known to throw herself into a furnace. She was found living in the, the very tops of trees or on the the heights of towers all around her. She would throw herself into rivers for hours or even days on end as a, a way of mortifying the flesh. On one occasion she was swept downstream and became entangled in the workings of a water mill but emerged without any broken bones. In her own time she was seen as being extreme, mad, reckless, Hence her name, Christina the Astonishing. These days she is known as the patron saint of the insane, the mentally ill, psychiatrists and therapists, and also of millers, for obvious reasons. Hers was a profoundly interesting life, and she was venerated for centuries. Less so now in our own rational enlightenment age. But I want to point to three interesting things about her life that I think have significance and meaning for us. The first is the very interesting depiction of her physical form in art. There is something in the way in which she is depicted and her story is told that is deeply insightful and instructive about the way in which we see women. She is presented as a profoundly free sort of person in an age when there were so many restrictions on what a woman could do and who she could be. The second thing that comes from St. Christina is this unusual idea about the smell of sin. Was this just madness? Was she just a mentally ill person? 
Or is there something of profound wisdom in her professed experience of being able to smell sin? Well, the American novelist and preacher Frederick Buchner tells of the experience that he had in an orcharding area of the United States. It was a time of glut in the fruit market. And as he drove through this region, all around him was the stench of hundreds of tons of surplus peaches rotting by the roadside. He said, we were in a world where there were people who were hungry and starving. And that smell to him became the smell of sin, as close as you could get to what pure sin would smell like. It's interesting that people today still talk about the sniff test, whether something you experience or you witness or you know about would pass the basic sniff test as whether it's okay or there's something dodgy about it. I think there is profound wisdom in Christina's story, that sometimes our little you sense of smell can tell us when something is sinful or off or wrong. The smell of sin not a bad capacity or faculty to cultivate within ourselves. And the final and most wonderful thing about Christina the Astonishing is that strange people, people with mental illness, people who may even be stark raving mad, can still be for us signs of God and channels of grace. As we begin to overcome many of our social prejudices about those with mental illness, St. Christina is a reminder that someone can be a true saint, even though they may be extremely eccentric or even plain crazy. That's a really important lesson for us to remember so that we can revere, love and respect people who seem to be so different to us normies. It also validates us when we ourselves are feeling that we aren't particularly smart or sensible or good. Remember Christina the Astonishing and all we can learn from her and feel good about yourselves, no matter how strange or crazy you may sometimes appear to behave.